For 14 seasons, Joe Morrison played football for the New York Giants and earned the nickname Mr. Dependable. He wasn't a headline performer, but as a man who played eight different positions, he got the job done when and where needed. Now as the head coach at South Carolina, he's molded a team very much in his image. Tonight, Morrison will start Mike Hold at quarterback in the Gator Bowl. Several times this season, Hold came off the bench to spark come from behind victories, and one of his favorite targets is Ira Hillary, who led the team with 25 receptions. The Gamecock defense is led by All-America linebacker James Seawright. Number 45 is normally an easy man to spot, as he was in on 133 tackles this season despite missing two games. In one of this season's better bowl matchups, first-year coach Pat Jones brings his Oklahoma State Cowboys into Jacksonville to face the Gamecocks. The OSU quarterback is senior Rusty Hildrick, who's made steady progress throughout his career and led the Cowboys into three bowl games. His top receiver is another senior, number 83, quick Jamie Harris, who caught 26 throws this year, five for touchdowns. But where the Cowboys truly excel is on defense, and number 99, Leslie O'Neill, is the anchor. A first-team All-America, O'Neill is only a junior, and the play of his unit tonight will likely make the difference in a game between the seventh-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks and the ninth-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. ABC Sports presents from Jacksonville, Florida, the 40th Gator Bowl. The 1984 Gator Bowl is brought to you by U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. By Owens Corning. Our building product put your house in the face. And by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. The weather is outstanding, and that's a switch, because a year ago tonight for the Gator Bowl, the temperature was 34 degrees. But right now, very good conditions. Temperature in the mid-60s. The Gator Bowl is sold out. This 40th edition featuring ninth-ranked Oklahoma State against seventh-ranked South Carolina. And from Stillwater, ready to enter the Gator Bowl, led by Coach Pat Jones, the Oklahoma State Cowboys. They came very close to winning a Big 8 conference title, losing only to Nebraska and Oklahoma in a game that meant an Orange Bowl bid and the conference title. Nonetheless, 5-2 and two in the Big 8, 9-2 and two overall this season, including a big win over Arizona State, 45-3 on opening night. They proved early they were serious and wound up with a mark of 9-2 and two during the regular year. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks. And they tell us about 45,000 people have come down from South Carolina as they greet their team. 10-1, and one, the Carolina record. It's the first time in the history of the Gamecocks they have won 10 games in one season. So perfect conditions at the Gator Bowl. We welcome you to Jacksonville. I'm Al Michaels. And it's been a crazy year, of course, in college football. The great debate, who's number one? Is it BYU? Well, they've already played. They finished unbeaten 13-0, and they already took part in the Holiday Bowl last week against Michigan. In this year of craziness in college football, only two bowls feature two top ten teams. One is the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma against Washington. The other is this one. And each team was ranked as high as second this season. Both made a run at a national championship. Carolina, in fact, was 9-0 before being upset by Navy. And then they rebounded to defeat Clemson 22-21, while Oklahoma State lost only to perennial powerhouses, Nebraska and Oklahoma. So it's a very, very good matchup. Pat Jones has done a masterful job in his first season as the head coach at Oklahoma State taking over in June when Jimmy Johnson left to go to Miami and Joe Morrison in his second year finished five and six in his first season ten and one now in his second season we talked about Morrison and his career with the New York Giants for 14 years he saw a lot of men come and go during that 14 year span one of his teammates is my partner tonight Mr. Lee Grosskopf who played with seven different teams when he couldn't find Morrison he'd go to people like Del Schachter throughout his career there was the cupper in 61 and now that he's tinting his hair gray here he is live simply a shadow of his former <laughs> self Lee Grosskopf what do you remember about Joe Morrison 
Well, uh, you know, I remember Joe Morrison as one of the most level-headed guys that I've ever known. He was able to get his ego out of the way and just go to work. He was that way as a player, and he's also been that way as a coach. And frankly, I'm not particularly surprised by his success. Well, his team, seventh in the country, the opponent ninth ranked. Strangely enough, the ninth ranked team, the lower ranked team, is a slight favorite in this game. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, I, I'm not really surprised, but you know, I think that they're going to uh, have to get really the same intensity out of their defense tonight that they have, and also get a top performance out of their quarterback, Mike Holt, who is starting only for the second time tonight. Pretty good job by Jones at Stillwater this year. Jones told us yesterday that he wanted to run the football. That would be his number one priority. But aside from that, he's going to have to play top defense and also get a good work out of his quarterback, Rusty Hilger. So that's the matchup. The Gator Bowl sold out in Jacksonville. More than 80,000 to look on. Oklahoma State against South Carolina with a kickoff coming right up. Different twist tonight. What we have done is we've wired Pat Jones not only for sound. We'll hear from him uh, from time to time, but also with a wireless electrocardiogram device. And there is the device that is wired to the chest. And through that machine, which is up here in the booth, we are able to monitor the pulse rate of Pat Jones. Now, uh, it was in the 130s. There it is, 151 again, which means his heart is uh, beating rather rapidly as we get set for the kickoff of this game. Not that we're going to learn necessarily anything of a uh, particularly scientific nature here tonight, but uh, from time to time, we'll take a random check at, uh, as to just how well Pat Jones is doing in terms of stress. Dr. Life. Laura Bauer and Dave Pettijohn monitoring and operating the equipment from up here. I mean, what is a game these days without some sort of a decibel meter for the crowd in the Kingdom or wireless EKG or what have you? We're going to give Jones everything tonight for the blood workup. <laughs> How about wiring the announcers uh, during the pregame show? Do you think that will happen sometime? Well, the normal pulse rate, according to Dr. Life Bauer, is between 60 and 100 beats per minute under normal circumstances. So Jones feeling a bit anxious and well he should before the kickoff of tonight's game. Most of the crowd will be rooting for South Carolina. Columbia is only 300 miles from Jacksonville. And they're estimating 45 to 50,000 people from South Carolina have come down considerably less from the state of Oklahoma as OSU with Larry Roach putting the ball on the tee gets ready to kick off to South Carolina. OSU actually won the toss and they elected to defer their choice until the second half. And so here we go with a line drive kick taking a bounce at the two yard line and fielded in the end zone by Kevin White who hesitates and then comes out unwisely so and is stopped at the six yard line. Mike Hold who had been the relief pitcher all season until the Clemson game. The quarterback Thomas Dendy is one running back. Quinton Lewis gets the start at the other running back spot. Ira Hillary one wide out number one and Eric Poole is the other. As far as the running backs are concerned we will also see a lot of Raynard Brown and Anthony Smith. Joe Morrison likes to get a lot of people into the game and through the course of the season he's been going with a two quarterback system. That's Dendy, their leading ball carrier, finding no room at all, no gain. It'll be second down and 10. Up front, Chris Corley's a good one, a tight end at 253 pounds, averaging 21 yards a catch. Carl Womble is the left tackle at 260. Then Jim Walsh, the left guard, 267. Tom Garner, 246. The All-America right guard is Dell Wilkes. Bill Barnhill next to him at 257. The South Carolina Gamecock. Second down and 10 with the ball at the six yard line. Delay to Dendy has some room, gets out to the 10, and out of bounds he goes at the 11 yard line, pushed out there by Adam Hines. The defense for Oklahoma State, the line, Ham, Harding, Washington. We talked about O'Neill, number 99, and Webb. The linebackers. Matt Munger and Ricky Adams. Munger was a walk-on originally, then earned a scholarship, and he's outstanding. Yancey Moore, Brown, and Hines. The secondary. Third down and three. And straight up the middle goes Dendy, stopped shy of the 15-yard line. And so the Cowboy defense, ranked in the top 10 for most of the season, has held James Hand 
makes the stop, and South Carolina will kick. They were a top defensive team in 1983, and they continued that way in 1984. That will be their strength tonight. Tom O'Connor to do the kicking as the Cowboys hope to set up a return. An end over end kick that takes a good South Carolina bounce, and from the 50, it rolls all the way down to the 31 yard line. So an average kick becomes a 54 yard kick. And the Cowboys start at the 31 with Rusty Hilger, the senior at quarterback. Thurman Thomas has been their main man of late. He's just a freshman. Will Timmons is the fullback. Jamie Harris, one wide out. And the other is Terry Weimer. Tailback oriented offense for Oklahoma State. They do the bulk of the ball carrying. The fullbacks rarely see the ball. And Jones likes to shuttle them in and out. So Thomas has seen more and more action as the season has progressed. Oklahoma State from the 31 yard line. They start with Thomas and up the middle he goes for three. Thurman Thomas, highly regarded last year as a schoolboy in Texas. Barry Hanna is the tight end. He's caught 27. Chuck Shanklin out of Hacienda Heights, California. Derek Burton, 255 pounder. Dave Tucker is 270. Ralph Partita, good lineman, 256. Paul Blair is the right tackle. On second down and seven, it's Thomas again. With a little bit more room and out to the 39-yard line. So it'll be third down and short, third and about two upcoming. Sumter, Wright, Woodley, and McEntee. Talked about Seawright, the All-America. Vogel is also a good one, too. But he's in the shadow of Seawright, so you don't hear that much about him. Major, Kalo, Brooks, in the backfield, Brooks, by the way, is the brother of James Brooks, now the Cincinnati Bengals, the former Auburn and San Diego Chargers star. Third down and two from the 39-yard line. Hilger, pump faking and then throwing complete to the 49-yard line for a first down. Hilger looks for that high percentage pass most of the time. He finds Harris right here, first down, first of the game. Jamie Harris is an outstanding wide receiver running here from his flanker position, the leading receiver on the team. He runs a hook or curl route. He's tackled promptly by Bryant Gilliard, the leading tackler in the secondary for the Gamecocks. And that's exactly right. That is what Hilger throws best. High percentage passes, low ratio of interceptions. First down Cowboys from the 49 yard line. Hilger, a short drop, another high percentage pass. This time to Malcolm Lewis, close to a first down. He's out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Lewis is one of the most talented receivers they have. He's only a sophomore, 6'3", 210 pounds. He caught 23 passes on the year for 341 yards. They like to go down the field with this type of possession passing. Hitches, hooks, curls, outs, crosses, short middles. Second down and one from the 42-yard line, and it's Thomas for the first down. He gets to the 38. James Seawright is in on his first stop, along with James Sumter, 47, and we have Seawright isolated. James Seawright, the All-American at his linebacker position, number 45, watches, pursues, and then closes in right here on the ball carrier. He had 133 tackles on the year, despite the fact that you mentioned it earlier, he missed two games. Two first downs in succession for Oklahoma State, and nearly a third after an eight-yard pickup by Thomas. So an auspicious beginning for the Cowboys, who hold South Carolina without a first down, and are moving. They're down to the 30th, second down and two. Every running play has been by the tailback. You mentioned they are extremely tailback oriented. The fullback is really like an extra pulling guard in this offense. Will Timmons, who's in there at fullback right now, has carried the ball only 11 times all season. Second down two from the 30 yard line. Hilger, perhaps changing the play at the line, throws complete for a first down. To number one, Bobby Riley at the 26 yard line. So three first downs in succession for Oklahoma State. Riley again in isolation runs a quick sideline cut here. 
and he loses a yard coming back. Chris Major, the cornerback, is on the coverage, and that ball was thrown perfectly by Hilger, who is now three for three in the passing department for 25 yards. Off to a hot start. First down, Cowboys at the 25-yard line. Hilger going over the middle into traffic and completing it anyway as he works it into Barry Hanna, the tight end. Gain of about three. It'll be second down, seven. Barry Hanna, one of four receivers with over 20 catches on the year, had 27 for 243 yards, and particularly has been effective on that pass cut. Short middle routes. Hanna caught five in the Cowboys' last game against Oklahoma. Cowboys in a bowl game for the ninth time. Six and two their bowl mark. South Carolina looking for its first ever bowl victory. Second down, six. Thomas, the freshman, has a first down. He's inside the 10, looking for a block, and he steps out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Will Timmons, the fullback in the eye, through the block that sprung him. Thomas on one of the definitive eye formation plays, the blaster isolation play, takes it outside with a great block from Timmons, and then he uses the speed to stay outside and nearly make it in for the touchdown. Hinton Taylor ran him out of bounds. The ball is at the three. Oklahoma State with a first and goal. So Thomas now five carries for 37 yards on the drive. Give it to Thomas again, and he is stopped at the two-yard line. Paul Vogel makes the tackle number 44. It'll be second down goal. This so far has been a textbook drive for Coach Pat Jones, who told us yesterday that ideally he would come out running the football. He wanted to pound on him with his eye back and throw the high percentage passes. So far, so good. And you saw Joe Morrison, who has to be a little distressed at this particular point, the way his defense begins this game. Double tight end set up here with Hannah and Dillard. It's second down and goal from the two. They pitch it to Thomas. Thomas nearly got tripped up back of the line of scrimmage and turns a two-yard loss into a one-yard gain. But he is shy of the goal line. He is stopped there by Joe Brooks, James's brother, number 23. And it's third and goal. Thomas on the pitch sweep around the left side. Lead block from his fullback, Timmons, again. Now watch the swarming technique here by a defense that has been labeled the Fire Ants. And look how everybody shows up here toward the end. Third and goal for the Cowboys at the one. Thomas again and over and in for the touchdown. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State, after stopping South Carolina, forcing a punt, moving down the field methodically, impressively, and eating up nearly six minutes in the process. And particularly on plays like this, tailback blast play off the right side, great effort by the freshman tailback Thomas who had 688 yards on the season, scores again. Larry Rosier's extra point is good. We have 8-16 to play in the first quarter in the Gator Bowl. Oklahoma State on top, 7-0. Pendable during his professional career. A team, as we said earlier, very much in his image. And Morrison talks about this edition of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Well, I know we got a lot of folks that enjoy playing, they enjoy hustling, and they enjoy working hard. And uh, to be honest, I always enjoyed those things. And uh, I had a lot of fun playing football, and I think we got a great group of young men who have a lot of fun playing football. He's become a big hero in Columbia already. Guy who started his coaching career at Tennessee Chattanooga, then he went to New Mexico. Two years ago, Lee had a team that was 10 and 1 at Albuquerque. Weren't invited anywhere. All dressed up, no place to go. I remember that very well. I covered him that season. Joe Morrison, believe it or not, Al played six different positions during the years that he was with the Giants. And prior to that, as a collegiate, he was a quarterback. So through the years, he managed to play seven different spots. Never complained about anything. As I said at the top of the show, very level-headed. Was able to get his ego out of the way. Had a workmanlike uh, attitude about it. And he still is that way. He hasn't changed a bit. I talked to him for about a half hour yesterday. and. It, it was just like a fireside chat. 47-year-old <laughs> Morrison watching his team getting set to receive the kick. They trail 7 to nothing, Taken by Brown at the 5-yard line, and Brown brings it back to the 16. 
Raynard Brown is the man. Perhaps you saw the South Carolina Florida State game that ran the kickback 99 yards for a touchdown and the replay indicated that his knee was actually on the ground before he took off with the ball. Disputed play but it went for a touchdown and Carolina beat Florida State as it turned out 38 26 that day. They claim in their films from the side that the knee was a half inch off the ground. Looked all over to find the angle. First down from the 16 yard line and it's a fumble and recovered at the 10 yard line by Mike Hold. Alan Mitchell the other quarterback may run the option a little bit better than Hole, who apparently is the better passer and he has trouble right here. Mike Hole trying to come down the line on the option play loses his grasp right here. It was part three of the triple option. He was looking for the trailing back. Now they are a split back veer team Al but they are atypical of split back veer teams in that they only run option plays about 25 percent of the time they run a lot of traps counters sweeps and tosses second and 16 he fakes the draw hold throwing out to the left side incomplete a very dangerous pass as it turns out in the flat to Thomas Dendy so Morrison watching as his team tries to get on track controversial call to throw a screen when you're this deep in your own territory. Now watch what Mike Hole does. He fakes to his fullback. Now he's looking out to Thomas Dendy in the left flat as he sets up the screen pass. Rod Brown, the great one in the secondary for the Cowboys, comes up and is right in Dendy's face. Strange call. Third down and 16 for the Gamecocks from just outside the 10 yard line. Hold his protection breaking down and down he goes at the six. That's Leslie O'Neill, number 99. No stranger to the sack, getting his first of the night. And South Carolina is again held without a first down deep in their own territory. O'Neill had 13 sacks this season, and with a period more than half over, South Carolina will have to kick again. Tom O'Connor, number eight, at the back of his end zone. Bobby Riley to receive standing at the 50 yard line a high spinning short kick that takes uh, Carolina bounce but then goes out of bounds at the 33 yard line. And so here come the Cowboys again from the Gamecock 33 on top seven to nothing. Eight Eastern time, New Year's night, the Sugar Bowl from New Orleans. Tom Osborne and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska ranked fourth against the Tigers of LSU going into the Sugar Bowl under first-year head coach Bill Arnsparger, led by Dalton Hilliard, among others, New Year's night. Here, Oklahoma State on top 7 nothing. They have it at the South Carolina 33-yard line with Thomas and Timmons, the running backs. It was Thomas, the tailback, who scored the OSU touchdown, and Hilger goes back to pass. Gets protection, throws, and it's incomplete as Thomas took his eye off the ball. He will throw to his backs. Thomas caught 19 this season and averaged about six yards per reception. So Hilger now four of five in the passing department, should be five for five with 29 yards. Thomas was the only Cowboy rusher on that touchdown drive. He had eight carries for 40 yards and the touchdown. Second and 10 at the Gamecock 33 yard line. Thomas again, gain of three, stopped at the 30 yard line by Willie McEntee. Hilger, the quarterback, got the last scholarship offered by Oklahoma State in 1980. No other school recruited him. He got the 29th and final scholarship. And he's made, as you recall, pretty steady progress throughout his career. Last year, he was the MVP in the Blue Bonnet Bowl victory over Baylor, despite not playing the second half because of an injury. On third and seven, Hilger has time again and then fires incomplete, intended for Terry Weimer. Fourth down. <laughs> Number 22, Terry Werner, the wide receiver, running a deep slant in or quick post pattern. The ball is thrown well by 
Hilger. It's broken up in the secondary there by number 45, Seawright, the linebacker. So Larry Rhodes comes in to attempt a field goal. No wind right now in the Gator Bowl. It's a 47-yard attempt from the 37-yard line, and the kick is no good. Off to the left. So South Carolina holds. Gamecocks take over, and we have 5.54 to go in the first quarter. Mike Hold getting his second start of the season, his only other start in the final game against Clemson. Talked to him yesterday about the two-quarterback situation. Well, you know, coming off the bench, you got to stay alert, and you got to know what's going on, and that's what I tried to do all the time. I tried to pay attention to the game and be ready, you know, when I did get my call. And fortunately, when I did, I was ready, and I think that was probably part of the reason that sometimes I was successful. More than sometimes, just about every time. South Carolina with some dramatic come-from-behind victories, and then hold earning the starting job in tonight's game. Back to pass under heavy pressure again, but he's able to scramble, as is his fort, and he gets to the 37-yard line where he's run down by Leslie O'Neill and Warren Thompson. Turns it into a seven-yard game. Isolated now on number 99, Leslie O'Neill, the All-American. Now watch his concentration here as he loses the blocker, pursues the quarterback, and you see, despite the fact that he's 250 pounds, he has 4'7 speed in the 40-yard dash, and he's going to be one of the premier defensive linemen in America next season, as he is already. Smith and Brown are now the running backs, and on the option, it is hold keeping and out to the 39-yard line, short of the first down by a yard, third and one upcoming. And again, it's O'Neill along with David Webb in on the tackle as the clock runs down to the five-minute mark in the first period. Mike Holt, a junior college transfer out of uh, Mesa, J.C. in Arizona, told me that of the quarterbacks he's watched in recent years, his favorite is John Elway. He likes the way Elway throws and the way he moves around. That man right there, Joe Morrison, told me yesterday, at times Holt reminds him a little bit of Fran Tarkenton, who was a teammate on the Giants. On third down, he finds some room over the right side and takes it out to the 48-yard line, where David Webb makes the tackle. So South Carolina picks up its first first down. Pat Jones, the Oklahoma State coach, 38 years old, played for Frank Boyles at Arkansas. Wasn't much of a player, though, but uh, I remember Frank talking about Pat Jones, the fact that he knew that Jones was interested in coaching, would probably make a good one someday, and he's made Boyles into a prophet, taking his team to a 9-2 and two mark. Fumble. Fumble, and it's recovered at the 44-yard line by Anthony Smith, number 49. Loss of four, second and 14, and let's check in with Lynn Swan. Al, admittedly, the South Carolina team has won and done so well this year because of the emotional intensity. But with 50,000 plus people down here patting on, them, on, them, on the back, rooting them on, they could cause that emotional intensity to be a deficit for this team, a negative. They haven't controlled it thus far in the ball game, a bad decision on the opening kickoff, and a couple of fumbles. They have to control it if they want to have a chance against the Cowboys. Well, they just picked up a first down, but now it is second and 14, and scrambling again is hold. Rolling left and throwing, and it is incomplete. Near midfield, intended for Ira Hillary at the 45-yard line of Oklahoma State, covered by Wendell Young. Isolated once again on number 99, Leslie O'Neill, at his defensive tackle position. Works off the blocker, spins away. Now he's pursuing Mike Hold once again. He's the man applying the pressure. It takes three men to ultimately get him down. Carl Warble, number 57, is the man who does it. Hold is 0 for his first two tonight. It is third down 14. South Carolina from the 44-yard line. They trail 7-0. Hold to throw again. Faking and then going deep into traffic and batted out of bounds and nearly intercepted. Eric Poole, the intended receiver, and Mark Moore got his hands on it. Number 44, fourth down. Tail end of the play here. Watch the tip by number 44, Mark Moore, in the defensive secondary. You see that leaping ability. Coming over also is Adam Hines, number 14. So good effort there in the secondary by the Cowboys. Third South Carolina punt as O'Connor puts it in the air. End over end. It bounces at the 21-yard line. And takes another good game-time bounce. And this time Carolina is able to pin the Cowboys deep 
at the three. O'Connor's put 11 inside the 20 this season. That one 48 yards. Not particularly artistic, but it did get the job done as Oklahoma State is backed up and there's a penalty marker down. The officiating crew is out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The call is against Oklahoma State, a personal foul. Referee tonight is C.C. Daly. So the ball was down at the three. And the personal foul will take it half the distance to the goal line. Personal foul gets the white team. Wilson from his kick and first one. Has it back distance to the goal. So from the one and a half, Ken Zachary comes in as the fullback and Thurman Thomas who's still the tailback in the eye. Oklahoma State on top by a score of seven to nothing with three minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first quarter at Jacksonville. I don't know that this game is getting much of a rating in the state of South Carolina. I say that because I think the entire state is in Jacksonville tonight. It seems like that at the Gator Bowl where everybody is clad in black and Oklahoma State starting from its one yard line has Ken Zachary take it out to the four. It'll be second down and eight. I saw about 500 of them at our hotel today. They say about 45 to 50,000 people have come down and they say there was a pretty good traffic jam on I-95, which is the main route from the state of South Carolina into northern Florida. Columbia, the state capital, about 300 miles from Jacksonville. On second down, it's Will Timmons who's back in the game at fullback, taking it out to the five-yard line as the Cowboys just look for some breathing room here. And it will be third down and seven. That's a real upset when the fullback carries the ball. Pointed out earlier, they have been going with the freshman Thomas for the most part at tailback. Tailback oriented. Zachary with just 23 carries in the 11 regular season games. The other fullback, Kelly Cook, had 17 in the 11 games. Hilger on a short roll on third down nearly has it picked off. And had Joe Brooks picked that one off, this game would have been tied. Fourth down. A look here from behind the quarterback as he sprints out to his left. He's looking for a combination pattern on his left. And Joe Brooks, number 23, comes up from his safety position, nearly intercepts that ball, and as Al said, had he caught it, would have been an easy trip to the end zone. Gary Cooper to punt. He talked about the fact Hilger loves those high percentage passes. That wasn't one of them. He got away with one. Cooper, an end over end short kick, bounces at the 35, is down at the 41 yard line. So South Carolina in good shape at the 41, and let's pay a visit to the campus of Oklahoma State University. The Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Al Michaels with Lee Grosscup and Lynn Swan in South Carolina has it at the 42 of Oklahoma State, first and 10. And how the Gamecocks gained on that exchange of punts. This is Thomas Dendy back of Lewis who can't lay down the block and Dendy pays the price. He is upended. Back of the line of scrimmage by Rodney Harding, number 42. 6'2", 240 pounder from Oklahoma City. That is not opportunistic football. When you get the ball in that kind of field position, you have to make them pay. Statistics show when you get the ball inside the 50 yard line after an exchange of punts uh, such as that, that you should score 70% of the time. On second and 12, Holt going deep, has a man out in front, and he dropped in the end zone by Chris Wade. Chris Wade, number two, had everybody beaten by five yards. And Holt laid it in there for him. Mike Holt throws a perfect pass to number two, Chris Wade, who is running a deep post pattern, down and in. Here he is, he has everybody beaten in the secondary. The ball is thrown perfectly, he has it in his hands. It is the classic drop pass. One of the most frustrating things that can happen either to a receiver or a quarterback. 
So Hold is now 0 for 4, but he's had two drops, and here's his reaction. He knows he has a touchdown, and then. I remember the feeling well. Hmm. Third and 12, and there's movement and a flag. 117 to go in the first period. Delay five yards against the Gamecocks. That puts it back at the 49 yard line. Still have game on the offense. Third down. In professional football, sometimes careers can be measured by dropped passes if you're a marginal quarterback. Officials from the ACC, third down and 17. Wade is wide to the left. Hillary wide to the right. Cole ran into his own man as he goes back to pass. Has to scramble to his left, goes to sweep to the 31-yard line, but then pushed back is Chris Corley. Corley caught the ball at just about the spot he needed to get to for a first down, which is the 31 and a half yard line, but then he's pushed back. Isolated here on number 89, Chris Corley, who takes an outside release, makes another outside move, curls back in, waves. Mike Holt sees him in the middle. Now, see where he is originally. Now, watch. As Al told you, he loses three yards right there, but they're giving him a better mark. Well, they give him a better mark, but not enough for the first down. Still, Carolina will go for it. It's fourth down and one as they spot it at the 33-yard line. And they give it to Lewis, and he has the first down as he gets inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Quick Lewis. Running back Quentin Lewis, number nine, on a counter play out of the split back beer, finds a big hole up the middle. And he is a good all-around athlete, as well as being one of the leading ball carriers on the team. He also throws the option pass very successfully. 12 seconds remaining in the quarter, first down from the 23-yard line. Hold. Going for six and throws it out of the end zone, and not a lot of room there as Hillary goes right into the chain link fence. How close the fence is to the, the corner of the end zone. You better have the presence of mind to know exactly where you are when you run into the corner here. Two seconds to go in the period. Ira Hillary has Mark Moore beat here, but watch what happens. That last defender was really tough. Yeah, right. Kind of like run, running into an iron gate, huh? <laughs> Second and ten. You put a shot on you. Right. Final play of the quarter. Hold overthrowing Dendy at the 15 yard line. And so they'll try it at the other end of the field with a third down play upcoming as we start the second period. Indicative of the kind of first quarter it was. No turnovers. Identical times of possession there at the, at the bottom line, and they're pretty much even in terms of overall statistics. It's pretty much of the ball game we predicted at the top of the show. We figured it would be a close, hard-hitting, low-scoring game. And as we start the second quarter, third down and ten, and fumble. another fumble as Hold, who has fumbled three times now, loses this one at the 27-yard line. So a frustrating drive. As they still wrestle for it, and number 54, Ricky Adams, comes out of the pack. But South Carolina not only loses the fumble, but watch the touchdown go away. Mike thing. Hold never has control of this ball as he's trying to spin and hand off to Thomas Dendy. He may not have gotten the ball properly from his center, but be that as it may, Ricky Adams, number 54, covers the ball for the Cowboys. And that's a big break because that's a drive killer. And they have the backup center in there, Leonard Burton. So maybe some mistiming on the snap. On first down, Thurman Thomas stopped in for a minimal gain. Stopped by James Seawright, the All-America linebacker, number 45, out of Simpsonville, South Carolina. I talked to Joe Morrison yesterday. He told me that Seawright reminded him a little bit of uh, one of our former teammates, a guy named Cliff Livingston. I don't know if you remember Cliff Livingston or not. Sam Huff and Harlan Savari got most of the publicity, but uh, Libby was one of those guys who played wall-to-wall -wall linebacker for the Giants. Second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Swing out to Thomas. He avoids one tackle and turns it into a short game. Actually, just about no game. Getting back to the line of scrimmage. 
Willie McEntee making the tackle. In the concept of possession passing, that's really kind of like a long handoff to the tailback when they throw that little swing out there, and it's something that Hilger does with quite a bit of consistency. You get a back who can move with the ball. Those quarterbacks' numbers look pretty good, though. Third down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Hilger, first time he is pressured, but is able to get it away. And it's Thomas who takes it out near midfield. Little shovel action right there. I remember the play very well. In fact, it's sometimes referred to as the Utah pass because my former coach, Cactus Jack Curtis, was the architect of the play. Now watch, there it is. It's a little shovel pass. Thomas comes underneath. And what you get, you get a double team and you get uh, a little open action there and it creates a lane and it can be very effective. So first down out at the 46 yard line after a 20 yard pickup. Hilger going quick slant into Malcolm Lewis number eight who makes the catch in South Carolina territory at the 45 yard line. It'll be second down two. The way that play got its name the Utah passes that in 1957 we used it so effectively against Army that Navy stole the play the following week used it on national television. The announcers referred to it as the Utah pass. They've been calling it that ever since. On second down and two. Nothing doing for Thomas who tries to fight his way forward for a first down. They have to get to the 44 yard line. He appears to be just shy of that spot. It'll be third and less than one. Early second quarter. Oklahoma State on top seven to nothing. Matching top ten. South Carolina coming in seventh in both wire service polls. Oklahoma State ninth. It's an important down for the Cowboys. Third and inches from the 44. And it's Hilger leaping over the top. And if they spot it, where his forward progress took him, he should have the first down. Vogel popped him. But he appeared to get it. It all depends on the spot now. Looks like a lock to me. Sure he had it. They line it up, and it is a first down at the 44-yard line. Good call by Hilger. You eliminate the ball handling. He has the size you like. He's 6'4", 205 pounds. You mentioned he's the quarterback nobody wanted. He's improved steadily, both physically and mentally, during the time he's been at Oklahoma State. Last year, he was listening to positive thinking tapes to improve his consciousness about winning. On first down from the 44-yard line, Hilger incomplete to the 39, intended for Barry Hanna. Well, we told you about our wireless electrocardiogram and our wireless pulse rate meter, 114 beats per minute. Remember, at the outset of the game, he was up to around 150 beats per minute. I'm sure his insurance agent is looking on <laughs> with more than casual interest tonight. Purpose, of course, to measure psychic stress. Right. Second, second down. And 10 from the 44. That's what we're both under. <laughs> On second and 10. Complete to the 40 yard line. As Hilger finds Riley. Bobby Riley, number one. For a short game, maybe four. It'll be third down and six at the South Carolina 40. 11.55 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma State on top, seven to nothing. This is a big third down play right now for quarterback Rusty Hilger. He Normally goes to his wide receivers, but in third and long situations, he's also done a lot to his tight end. Hilger looking for the tight end, Barry Hanna. Perfectly called, and he takes it to the 30-yard line. So he finds Hanna, as you had prognosticated, right over the middle. Delay across here by quarter by the tight end Barry Hanna. Just a little delay, and then he cuts back across the middle. This, as I mentioned a moment ago, has been one of the plays they have used effectively in third and obvious pass situations because of the fact that they usually tend to gang up on the wide receivers. Cowboys now at the South Carolina 31 yard line. First and 10. A short drop. 
And incomplete, but a flag right there. An obvious call as Jamie Harris was tied up by Otis Morris, second team cornerback. Had him covered and had him covered too well. Jamie Harris on a hitch pattern. Look at this. He just hitches up right here. And that is the premature contact that Al mentioned. Pass on appearance, automatic first down, first and 10. Doesn't take a Phi Beta Kappa to make this call. And I'm glad because I don't think there are any in the booth. <laughs> None that we're aware of anyway. First down from the 25 yard line. Maybe we'll check with Swan later. This is Thomas inside the 20 and wrapped up at the 19 yard line. So they've been going with Thomas at the eye back spot throughout the course of the game to this point, though they do have people like Charles Crawford and Sean Jones, who could see quite a bit of action before this Good night. Good confrontation between Blair and Seawright right here, and Blair is winning it. Number 72 battling the All-American number 45. He controls him long enough to let the tailback get outside. Second down, four from the 18-yard line. Paul Thomas is number again. First down, inside the 10 he goes. It'll be first and goal as he takes it to the six-yard line. You can see with the moves that Thomas is exhibiting why he was so highly recruited. Good look at the wall forming here in front of Thomas on one of the definitive eye formation plays. Once again, it's Paul Blair, number 72, leading the way. Host of tacklers there in the secondary is the fire ant swarm in to bring Thomas down, but he's off to a hot start. 14 carries for 83 yards now for Thomas. Some thought he was the best prep running back in the state of Texas last year. Winds up at Stillwater and winds up in the starting lineup. Hilger throwing for the corner of the end zone and incomplete. Second down. Tended receiver was Jamie Harris. Jamie Harris, one of the fastest players on the squad, has world-class speed. And he's also very effective as a possession receiver. He's one of those guys who just keeps getting better and better. Spent two years with the Cowboys now. Originally was a Texas Tech, played there for a couple of seasons, then had to sit out a year. Caught 26 this season. Five for touchdown. Second down and goal from the six. Oklahoma State leading seven to nothing. Little toss to Thomas, and he's wrapped up at the five-yard line. So it'll be third down and goal. Another one of the classic tailback plays, sometimes referred to as student body right. I think it was our one-time colleague, Ben Martin, who was watching one of those USC tailbacks run. It seemed like he saw the whole student body out in front of him. He said, well, there's that student body right play. That's, that's become a buzzword now for about the last 20 years. SC running it through the years. Yep. Simpson, Allen, the late Ricky Bell, and others. Timeout is called here by Oklahoma State with 9.44 to go in the half. Here, January 5th coming up, two shows you're very familiar with, the Pro Bowlers Tour and ABC's Wide World of Sports, but note the new times. The Pro Bowlers Tour getting underway at 3 Eastern time, and then Wide World of Sports commencing at 4.30 Eastern time. On Saturday, the 5th of January, Mary Lou Rett will be in action on the 5th. You will see her and her first performance since the Olympics in Los Angeles, and also Mark Breland's second professional bout on Wide World, the 5th of January. Oklahoma State calling a timeout to discuss the play here. Third down and goal from the six-yard line. 9.44 to go in the half. They lead 7-0. They pitch it to Thomas, and he looks to throw, and he's going to throw back to Hilger, and he has it for a touchdown. Quarterback to tailback to quarterback. Thurman Thomas, who threw a touchdown pass earlier this season against Tulsa, throws one here in the Gator Bowl to his quarterback. Yes, they have used this play before, and yes, it is one of the definitive 
Gadget plays. The throw back to the quarterback. I've always liked this play. Hilger has to be an actor here. He pitches out, kind of lazies out here to the left, and he's all alone in the left flat. The ball thrown with a nice, soft, looping trajectory by Thomas for the touchdown. The snap was errant, and so they have to turn it into a futile two-point attempt that is unsuccessful. That's Adam Hines right there, and so they do not convert the extra point, and their lead is 13 to nothing with 9.39 to go in the half. The previous play, a bad snap by center Jerry Koshow, number 52, to his holder, Adam Hines, number 14, results in a mad scramble here. And now Hines, a defensive back who is a, a, was a one-time quarterback, tries to make the most of it by just throwing a Hail Mary up here, and it's intercepted by the Gamecocks, and it's meaningless. 13 to nothing, Oklahoma State a slight favorite coming into the game. Two very impressive drives. This one, 15 plays, 74 yards, and with 9.39 to go in the half, the Cowboys are on top by two touchdowns. But it all turned around with that fumble by Mike Hold, and when you think back on plays that maybe were the turning point, or might have been a turning point in the game, I think that fumble by Mike Hold is going to be very important, unless, of course, the Gamecocks turn it around again. And the drop pass, because they would have had a touchdown. Taken at the two-yard line by Raynard Brown. Now past the 20, Brown down the sideline and shoved out of bounds near the 40-yard line, and the flag goes down as Jones runs over. Pat admonishing one of his own men right there for a possible late hit. Let's get the call. And it's a personal foul against Oklahoma State. Might have been on the, the kicker, Larry Roach, number nine. In any event, after a good run back, it's going to cost them 15 more. So South Carolina has it marked from its own 42 down to the 43 of Oklahoma State. Here's the call. Dead ball, personal foul against the white team. First down and 10. Here is the personal foul right at the end. Larry Roach, the kicker, number nine, gets a late hit on uh, Raynard Brown, number 30. And you saw Jones go running right over to him to admonish him for it. As Hold tries to get things started. Actually, in a way, this is a typical South Carolina game. Against Clemson, they were down 21 to 3. Came back to beat them 22 to 21. Against Notre Dame, they came from behind in the fourth quarter. It was Hold who kept coming off the bench almost uh, week after week in relief of Alan Mitchell to pull out victory after victory, even though he did go all the way against Clemson. And now he's looking at his team in a 13 point hole. They now bring it the back to the 49. We still had a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> Dead ball hitting out of bounds. First down. Okay, that clears it up. All right. So Pat Jones watching his team. Building up a pretty good ladder here on a relatively humid but otherwise pleasant night in Jacksonville. Temperature in the mid 60s from the 49 yard line. Down the line option. Hold keeps and takes it to the 43. Gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Alan Mitchell, who had been the starter most of the year, is considered to be more of the typical veer option type quarterback. Hold, however, is a better passer, better scrambler, and the master of the big play. He's considered one of the most exciting players they've ever had. Second and four at the 43. Off the play fake. Hold going deep, looking for Hillary. It's tipped and incomplete. Number 44, Mark Moore, who batted away an earlier pass, deflects this one intended for Hillary. It'll be third and four. Tail end of the last play. Ira Hillary has a step on Mark Moore, number 44, but Moore gets just a little piece of the football and squats it away. 
is also one of the hardest hitting backs uh, in the Big Eight Conference. Mark Moore, number 44. All Big Eight. Leading tackler among the defensive backs. Third down and four, and there's some movement. Looks like the uh, left tackle, number 72. David Poinsett. With some illegal movement. Cross from five, back to the 48-yard line. If you look on the right side of the screen, you're going to see some illegal motion right there. It was actually Jim Walsh, Jim Walsh number wasn't 77. Walsh was the man. So it's third down and nine at the 48-yard line. Holds. Is run down at the 46-yard line by Rodney Harding. So the secondary did its job. And that enabled Harding to come in and get the sack. This is how it looks when you're a quarterback under duress. Rodney Harding, number 42, one of the players who plays with so much intensity on that premier defensive unit for the Cowboys. Tom O'Connor, a high kick that is fielded at the 15. A fair catch is made there by Bobby Riley. And so the Cowboys have it back after a 41-yard punt with 8-11 to go in the half. It's Oklahoma State leading 13-0. Rusty Hilger, the Oklahoma State quarterback, spoke with him yesterday, and here's the way he describes his style. Conservative, I think, is a good word for it. I think I'm conservative in, in, uh, in play and also in actions off the field. Um, I, I don't feel like uh, in, in our game plan that the, the, the quarterback is going to be the major factor in the win or loss of a game, like I stated earlier. Uh, and I don't think that our play, or my play at quarterback has been too conservative uh, through the season. and. Um, and I hope that it's not going to be conservative in this next ball game. I think it's going to be a, a big factor in the game, win or loss this time around. So far, so good for him. Two long drives he's engineered. His team leads 13-0. Oklahoma State from the 15-yard line. And Thurman Thomas, who's been their workhorse, has stopped for a loss of two. I had a chance to visit with Rusty right after you did, Al. And I asked him who he particularly admired when he was growing up as a quarterback. He said Roger Staubach was his hero. And... Uh, Times I see uh, some similarities. The way he sets up, releases the ball, moves around. Led them into three bowl games in his four years at Oklahoma State. Second down and 12 here. Thomas takes it out to the 18 yard line. Hilger hopes to wind up getting a shot in the pros. You don't hear a lot of talk about Hilger getting drafted, certainly not in the high rounds, but who knows? Maybe. Uh, the USFL, maybe he'll latch on as a free agent somewhere, and you never know. If he continues to make the progress he's made the last three years, he might develop into something. 6'4", he certainly has the size, 205 pounds. On third and seven, he throws it behind the intended receiver, Jamie Harris. What we had there was a breakdown in communication. He was throwing a hitch. Harris was running a fly pattern. The only thing to be happy about at that point is that it wasn't intercepted. And South Carolina will get the ball back as Carrie Cooper, a freshman from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, stands in his own five-yard line, ready to put it in the air. 7.06 to go in the half. The left-footed Cooper hits a line drive to the 46-yard line and stopped right there is Jerry Dunlap. Thurman Thomas, playing on the special teams, got down to make the tackle after a 37-yard punt. Oklahoma State leading South Carolina 13 to nothing with 6.57 remaining in the first half. Talked about the Sugar Bowl coming up New Year's night, and then the big one, January 20th, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 19 from Stanford Stadium for the first time ever on ABC. And we'll get them underway with the pregame festivities at 4 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday, January 20th for Super Bowl 19. South Carolina with Thomas Denby carrying the ball. Out 
out to the 47 for a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. Well, I mentioned earlier the Gamecocks are not your typical split back beer team and that they only run the option play about 25% of the time. They use a lot of that sort of action, the, uh, the power pitch, the sweeps, the pitch outs, the counter plays. They do a lot of trapping off of the split back beer. Joe Morrison really likes a lot more multiplicity and flexibility in his offense than, say, your typical, uh, typical split back beer coach like Bill Yeoman or Jim Wacker. On second down and eight, that didn't fool anybody as Dendy gets wrapped up at the 45-yard line. That's number 42, Rodney Harding, in there again. But with all of what I just said, obviously the Cowboys have a good scouting report on Joe Morrison's team because so far they have a, done a good job of bottling up all of their key plays, and particularly that counter trap play right up the middle. Then again, it would be a six-point difference that Chris Wade held on. South Carolina had a sure touchdown pass dropped by Wade in the end zone. They trail by 13, and Hold goes back to pass on third and 11. Rose. 38-yard line and complete for a first down to Ira Hillary. Mike Holt throwing to his favorite target, Ira Hillary, number one, who runs a deep sideline pattern. He goes down about 18 yards, breaks it to the sideline, loses a yard, catches the ball in perfect shape. Leslie O'Neill, isolated once again, takes an outside cut, now pressures Mike Holt right there. But Holt has already released the ball. Still, you see him always coming with intensity. First down at the 37-yard line. No room for Dendy. It's Leslie O'Neill, number 99, in on the tackle. Counter play out of the split back veer, and that's not the place to run. That's going right into the teeth of their defense when you run into big number 99, Leslie O'Neill. O'Neill having a good night, 42. Rodney Harding having a good night. Second down and nine from the 36-yard line. Lewis losing the ball. It's a fumble and recovered by Oklahoma State, and it's Harding, number 42. Hold and Lewis having some trouble with the handoff. And again, South Carolina puts the ball on the ground, and for the second time, Oklahoma State has come up with a recovery. Quentin Lewis, number nine, on part one of the triple option, is hit and then loses the ball. It's recovered by Rodney Harding, number 42. And it has not been a very good first half for the Gamecocks as the Cowboys take over again with 439 to go in the first half. At the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, four minutes and 39 seconds remaining first half. Oklahoma State leading 13 to nothing. They have it at the 35-yard line, first and 10. Rusty Hilger, the quarterback. Back to pass, under some pressure, and scrambles. Turns it into a short gain out to the 38-yard line. He's stopped there by James Seawright. Good job of improvising there by quarterback Rusty Hilger. As I mentioned before, he has the size you like. He's a big guy, 6'4", 205 pounds. Good athlete, has a good sense of the field. He scanned the field, saw that everybody was covered. Rather than take an interception, turned it into about a three-yard gainer. The tailback is Charles Crawford. After Thomas had gone all the way, Crawford number 32, 6'2", 230-pound tailback. The fullback is Ken Zachary. Second and seven, swings it back the other way to the tight end, Barry Hanna, and he's hit hard at the 40-yard line by Paul Vogel, number 44. Quite a play by Paul Vogel there because he had to ward off three blockers in the screen, and then he came up with the ball carrier. Well, Seawright gets all of the publicity. Let's face it, when you've got a guy who you think can make All-America like a Seawright, you've got to talk him up, get the writers to talk about him and the broadcasters, and then a guy like Vogel suffers because of it. PR man's job? Yep. Third down and five from the 40-yard line. Pilger over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Malcolm Lewis. 
through his hands. And so it'll be fourth down. Hilger is now 9 of 16 for 53 yards. Lewis on the break-in pattern right here. Ball's just a little out of reach. Possibly catchable. It would have been a circus catch had he made it. And it's Cooper to kick now with 3.09 remaining in the half. Jerry Dunlap back to receive for the game time. High kick, not a whole lot of distance. A fair catch is called for, but he lets it bounce. And it is down at the 32-yard line. Gamecocks will have it there, and we'll take a look at the campus of the University of South Carolina. The University of South Carolina is in the forefront of a progressive New South, a crossroads for international leaders and experts from every academic field. USC is a sanctuary for academic excellence and ex holds back to pass on first down and throws incomplete. Intended for the tight end Chris Corley. Everybody was pretty well covered. Hold improvising and then throwing it away. It is second down and ten. Good place to throw that one. Joe Morrison. 14 years with the Giants. 12-year overall record, as you can see, includes his stints at Tennessee, Chattanooga, New Mexico, and now South Carolina. He came fashionable for Morrison to dress in black last year. He's done it all throughout the course of the 84 season as the ball is pitched back to Anthony Smith, who takes it out to the 39-yard line. And the Gator Bowl is really tonight a sea of black. Been known as the Black Magic season. For the Gamecocks. Strength and mystery. Is the way the Gamecock backers put it. And for the first time ever, this team won 10 games in a season. Prior to that, the high was eight. Third down, a short three from the 39 yard line. Reverse pivot. He pitches the ball back to Raynard Brown, who turns it out to the 46 yard line. And a first down. Well, that's one of the exciting plays out of the split back beer. They sometimes called the counter option. We like to talk, refer to it as the whirly bird by the quarterback, but it, it's a cute little move here by Mike Hold as he spins. The action starts one way, then it comes the other. Nice footwork and the pitch to the trailing back, Raynard Brown, the fastest man on the team. He's the man that had that long return earlier. Under two minutes now, remaining in the first half as Raynard Brown. Takes it into Cowboy territory to the 45, stopped by Leslie O'Neill. The Gamecocks have all three timeouts remaining, and the clock right now running with 143, 142 and counting down, and second down and one upcoming at the 45-yard line. So now they are running some of the more typical split back beer plays. Second and one. And recovered by South Carolina, but it cost them about 10 yards. Raynard Brown back at the 41. So again, trouble with the execution. And instead of second and one, it's going to be third down and 13. Trying to come again with the counter option. Play that worked moments ago. The pitch to the trailing back Raynard Brown. It's read perfectly by Rodney Harding, number 42, who's right in position there to make the stop had there not been a fumble. Timeout is taken by South Carolina. That's their first. The clock is stopped now with 115, but more importantly, they've got to come up with a way to pick up 14 yards on a third down call as they trail 13 to nothing. It's being some safe. No, no, no. I wouldn't blitz. I wouldn't blitz. Go ahead and go in something safe. You know, if they, now if, if they hit one, Matt, we're going to have to be prepared for a. No huddle if they can make a first down down in there, you know. Pat Jones, we have him, Mike, and he not only is the head coach, but is the former defensive coordinator, so he's right at home right here. Doesn't want to blitz. Third down and 14 upcoming. Pat Jones, who agreed to wear a mic, very cooperative, and it was nice to hear his caller, he said he definitely did not want a blitz, so they're going to be playing more of a hit-and-read type look. Four down linemen. 
They send the four with seven back. Still put the pressure on hold. He's able to escape and get to the 50-yard line, but he is six yards shy of the first down. He's run down by number 90, Matt Munger. And the clock is down to a minute remaining. And South Carolina will take a timeout here. So that's their second. They have one remaining as they get ready to make the play on fourth and sixth when we come back. Again, a visit to the campus of South Carolina. After taking the timeout, that's what we have coming up for you at halftime. South Carolina at least lines up in punt formation. Will they kick it? Well, yes, they do. They decide to boot it away off the foot of O'Connor, bouncing inside the 10 yard line and that will pin the Cowboys deep at the eight. So Morrison after thinking it over I guess figuredly at this point fourth and six if you don't make it not only do you turn the ball over but you turn it over at midfield with enough time for the Cowboys to score again and that could be disastrous for South Carolina. I think it was definitely a wise decision. He's trailing by 13 points and uh, if they don't score any more he can come back in the second half and not need to depart too radically from his initial game plan. And they have been a strong second half team anyway. Extremely. Uh, in their 11 games this season, they have trailed at the half in five of those 11 games. And they lost only one game all season. That was to Navy. After they'd gone 9-0, they went up to Annapolis. And the next thing they knew, the score was 38-7 to in favor of the Naval Academy. Carolina made it closer at the end but that turned out to be their only loss and in the meantime the Cowboys will take a timeout here as they get set to start from their eight yard line and we'll listen into Pat Jones will open up his mic wait, wait a minute go hey 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 how many how many timeouts they got left one each they got one they got one timeout left we're all right <laughs> okay. Well, just fall on the ball then. Well, Pat Jones giving you the strategy right there. They'll just fall on the ball, knowing that he can run the clock out at this point and go into the locker room at halftime, leading 13 to nothing. I think you'll take that. Two good sustained drives, and also a big break for Oklahoma State when the wide receiver. Chris Wade dropped a sure touchdown pass in the end zone. So Hilger will just go down to one knee. Carolina can stop the clock once if they so desire. That dropped pass by Wade coupled with the fumble by Hold really has made this a different ballgame. So if South Carolina does not stop the clock with a final timeout, just one more play remaining in the first half. Very quiet crowd, as we say, most of the crowd, partisans of the Gamecocks coming down from South Carolina. I guess about 10 or 15,000 Oklahomans have made it to Jacksonville, but the first half has belonged to the Cowboys. Offensively and defensively, and we've reached the half at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. 40th anniversary of the Gator Bowl, and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State lead South Carolina 13 to nothing. And let's go to Lynn Swan. Thank you, Al. Coach, conservative offense, do you think that aided your ball club in the first half from making mistakes? Well, I tell you, Lynn, anytime we want to run shovel pass and quarterback throw pass, uh, you know, well, that's, uh, we're, that's wide open jokers for us. Yeah, but those seem to be set up by the conservative play, the ground attack, the short passes. You know, we are a little bit bigger, and we did feel like that we need to try to pound at them a little bit and see if we could. If we could, we're going to keep on doing it. Kicking game's killing us. We're not playing very good in the kicking game. We didn't feel those punts, had a bad snap, missed a field goal we should have made. Kicking game has hurt us. What do you think they'll do in the second half to counter your success in offense? I think as long as it stays like this, they'll just kind of keep on plugging away and doing about what they've been doing and, you know, hope for a break. Now, if we can get a little bit more lead, they'll have to go to throwing the ball, I think. Thank you very much, Coach. Right. We'll be back after our half with our halftime activities after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Morrison, head coach of South Carolina. Coach, in that first half, um, what did you tell your team in the locker room about the first half? They seem to have a big play slip away from them. Well, you know, defensively, I thought we played pretty well in the first half. Offensively, we didn't play very well at all, and 
uh, unless we start moving the football and uh, put some points on the board, it's going to be a long evening for us. I, I think some of our young men are just trying a little bit too hard, and if they just go out and relax and play like they're capable of playing, I think we can get back in the ball game. Lee Gross Cup seems to think that maybe in the second half you'll try throwing the football a little bit more on first down, a little more play action passing. Well, you know, you got to make the run go to have that play action be effective for you. We got to shorten them up a little bit and not try and go deep all the time. You're only a few inches away from that big play, but in the second half, will we see Mitchell come into the ball game at all? Well, that's a good possibility. We'll just wait and see how it goes here after the first couple of series. Okay, Coach. Good luck to you in the second half. Al? All right, thank you, Lennon. That would be a switch, of course, because it's been Hold replacing Mitchell all season long, and Hold went all the way, and there is Hold, number seven, in the first half. And uh, it could be the reverse situation developing here. 13 to nothing. Morrison stating it. That he felt the defense did an adequate job offensively. Not much. Here are the numbers. The key in looking at the statistics now as opposed to the first quarter, you see two turnovers for the University of South Carolina, and that's really been the difference in the football game. Time of possession still relatively the same. And the, uh, the stats are uh, somewhat even, although you see the dominance there in total yardage by, uh, by Oklahoma State. New Gator Bowl record tonight. Every seat sold at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, 82,138. This game has been plagued by rotten weather for a few years, but very nice tonight. Scott Hagler to kick off for South Carolina and into the end zone and down there. So out to the 20-yard line, Will come the Cowboys up against this Carolina defense. James Sumter at one end. Frank Wright, 276-pound tackle, flanked by Glenn Woodley, 238 pounds. Willie McEntee, 222. They're not that big, but they're very, very quick. James C. Wright, the All-American linebacker. Paul Vogel in the middle, and Carl Hill, the other outside backer, at only 186 pounds. So not the biggest defense in Division 1A by any stretch of the imagination. But as we say, very, very fast, very quick. First and ten, Cowboys from the 20-yard line. With the Carolina crowd trying to get its defense to get the ball back in a hurry, and they begin in that fashion as they stop Thurman Thomas at the 19-yard line. Carl Hill made the stop. Chris Major is one cornerback. Hinton Palo is the other and then the safeties are James Brooks's brother Joe and Bryant Gilliard who had eight interceptions to tie a school record this season including four in that game against Florida State. Second and 11 for the Cowboys from the 19 yard line. Hilger. at the 18-yard line. So a most auspicious beginning for South Carolina defensively here in the third period. Cowboy offense, which ran up 13 points in the first half. Hilger, Thomas, and Zachary, the starting backs. Harris and Weimer are the wideouts. Hannah Shank from Burton Tucker, Partita, and Blair, the offensive line. Third and 12. Delay to Thomas. Nice little sidestep action. Out past the 25, and he has a first down. Great run. What a great individual effort by Thurman Thomas. Highly recruited out of Missouri City, Texas, a freshman. Tailback draw to Thurman Thomas, far and away the leading ball carrier in the first half for the Cowboys. Little juke step there, move back to the outside. Joe Brooks, number 23, is the man who finally hangs on to Thurman Thomas. Great second and third effort for the first down run. First down from the 30-yard line as Hilger throws complete out to the 37 to Jamie Harris for a pickup of seven. Thomas, who gained 12 yards on that third down play, has now picked up 97 on the night and 19 carries. That last play was part of their quick passing game. They like the slants. The hitches, the quick outs, the five yard hooks, all part of the possession passing game that has been so effective for quarterback Rusty Hilger. Second and three from the Cowboy 37 yard line. Thomas. That time down, shy of the first down. James Seawright. 
James C. Wright, the All-American, who had 133 tackles on the year, despite the fact that he missed two games. They carried him off in the Florida State game. The injury was not serious, however. Joe Morrison told me yesterday, C. Wright should be 100% for the game. Third and inches for the Cowboys from the 40-yard line. Third quarter, Oklahoma State leading South Carolina, 13 to nothing. Send Harris in motion. Give the ball to Thomas. He tries to leap for the first down, and we'll see where they spot it. He needed to get just past the 40-yard line. Vogel and Brooks were the greeting party. That's how close they were to the first down on third down. And we'll watch where they mark it. Time of year for season's greetings. Not that kind. He just does have it. So again, it's Thomas for the, the first down. Up, up, and over. Just that little squirming second effort as he's hit gives him the first down by inches. First and ten Cowboys just outside the 40 yard line. Fakes it to Thomas with a short roll to his left. Goes out to the 45 yard line. The tight end Barry Hanna out to the 50 yard line, and he's very close to a first down. You know, Hilger is not spectacular, but I just like the way he runs this team. You can see the, the confidence he has and the team has in, in him. He's not going to do anything to really dazzle you, but he's been moving the ball well tonight and uh, has everything in his command. Well, he's 11 of 18 in the passing department now for 70 yards. He's had three easy passes dropped. And he caught one touchdown pass. He's in charge. First down from the 49-yard line. Thomas picks up a couple. Glenn Woodley, number 94, in on the tackle. This is an important drive right now for Oklahoma State because the Fire Ant defense came out with a lot of intensity. They really seem to be pumped up. And gradually now, you see that sort of fading away. And, and more and more, the Cowboys seem to be in charge. A little third down and 12 run by Thomas on the first series was important. Second and eight from the 47 yard line. Hilger lofting one and incomplete at the 22 yard line intended for Bobby Riley who had a step on the defensive back and the ball was there but he couldn't hold on. Bobby Riley is going to hate watching this on film or on videotape on the replay because he ran a perfect fade pattern. He got a step on Otis Morris, number 28, the cornerback for South Carolina. The ball was thrown with that nice, soft, looping trajectory that is so important when you're running the fade pattern. That is the consummate touch and timing route because you, as a quarterback, you take three steps and just throw it to a spot. Passing down, they go to split backs on third and eight, put Crawford in the game, probably to block number 32 from the 47 yard line. They sent Crawford in the pattern now and he takes it and gets inside the 40 to the 37 yard line and a first down. So Thurman Thomas went out. They bring in Crawford who saw quite a bit of action this season but not much tonight and he makes the catch for the first down. Crawford is their big eye back. He's 6'2", 230 pounds and he can pound on you. He's also been effective as a receiver with underneath patterns like that. And they're doing a good job now of mixing up their pass cuts between the outside men and also throwing up the middle. Somewhat similar to their very first drive tonight, which consumed a lot of time, resulted in a touchdown. They've already picked up four first downs. They have it first and 10 from the 37 yard line, and they let Crawford carry it. He fumbles it, but it bounces right back into his stomach. Ten minutes to go in the third period. So Oklahoma State has had the ball for five minutes already. We mentioned how they use their eye back almost continuously. We've seen the fullback carry only once tonight. The fullback in this offense is really like an extra pulling guard. He provides the lead block on the isolation play and the power pitch and the tailback draw, but mostly he is a blocker. It is second down and eight. Second and eight from the 35-yard line. 
Hilger going deep and incomplete, just out of the reach of Jamie Harris, number 83. So it'll be third down. Another touch and timing pattern. It's the fade pass again to the wide receiver. Again, it's Otis Morris, number 28, on the coverage. Again, the wide receiver has a step on him. They're obviously going to work on number 28, Otis Morris. Oklahoma State has converted three third down opportunities on this drive and try for a fourth here on third and eight. Little screen pass is set up, and Zachary has it. He gets inside the 30 and down to the 28-yard line. He is just shy of the first down, stopped by Otis Morris. And so let's see about the decision now from Pat Jones. It's going to be fourth and about one and a half from the 29-yard line. If he wants to go for the field goal, it would be a kick of about 47 yards. Zachary, the fastest man on the team. They tried to set him up on the screen pass. Obviously, that's a nice way to create an immediate open field situation for a guy with world-class speed. A timeout is now taken. Timeout taken by Oklahoma State with fourth down upcoming and 8.54 to go in the period. Actually, it was not Oklahoma State that called a timeout. It was the official himself, C.C. Daly, who, as you can see, needs some medical attention for a cut above the eyebrow. In the parlance of amateur boxing, referee stops contest at the 6.06 mark <laughs> in the third period. We can laugh because he was smiling. It's nothing serious, just a cut, but it was enough to have Daly stop play preparatory to a fourth down. And if nothing else, it gave the Cowboys that much extra time to talk about what they want to do without costing them a timeout. Zebra's life isn't always easy. Yeah, not this year, especially. <laughs> so Daly is ready, and so are the Cowboys inside the 29-yard line. Fourth down, one and a half to go with Oklahoma State on top, 13 to nothing, and they're going for it. <laughs> but before they do, Daly again has stopped the clock. Gave the signal for delay of game. Either that or he was just pulled in his arm. Well, it could be that Daly, Daly might need a little extra time here. Let's see. He wants the clock now to, to start. And that was it. He wanted the clock to start again, which it now has. So it's ticking down with 840 to go in the third period. Fourth down, one and a half to go. Hilger, nice play fake, throws, and it is incomplete intended for Hannah. So a very big play for the South Carolina defense after Oklahoma State was marching down the field. They picked up four first downs and held the ball for 628. I think Rusty Hilger makes a mistake here, Al. I think he could have run this ball very easily. Now watch, he gets outside, and I think he may have been able to run the ball for the necessary yardage. He opts instead to go to his tight end, Barry Hanna, number 82, and the ball falls incomplete. South Carolina gets it back at the 29-yard line with 8.32 to go in the quarter. On no drive, have they held the ball for more than six plays? Five punts and two fumbles have resulted from the seven possessions all in the first half as South Carolina has it for the first time now offensively in the second half. Mike Hold is the quarterback. Hold is under pressure as he releases it. He has a man open at the 25-yard line, and it's Eric Poole making the catch. So the Gamecocks on their very first offensive play in the second half make it a big play. Isolated on Eric Poole, the wide receiver, as he runs right by Mark Moore, number 44. The zone coverage, Hines number 14 is coming over to pick up, but he is open along the sidelines, and there is the biggest offensive play of the evening for the Gamecocks. Just when Joe Morrison said he was tired of all that deep passing, they come right back and do it some more. <laughs> right. First down from the 26-yard line, and it's Dendy taking it for a gain of two. 
The Cowboy defense, one of the best in the nation. James Ham is very, very quick. Rodney Harding had an outstanding first half. The nose guard is John Washington, who is a junior. Then Leslie O'Neill, not only an All-America, but only a junior. He's back next year, and Dave Webb on the other side. Well, Mike Holt told me yesterday when I talked to him that he, he really favors the deep pass. He says that he loves to throw the ball. So he may keep doing it. Second and nine. Play fake. Locks it, and it's incomplete. Double coverage in the end zone. Hold wants interference. Danny Smith was the intended receiver. No flag. Smith, a freshman. Linebackers for Oklahoma State. The former walk-on Munger and Ricky Adams. And the secondary, Wendell Yancey on one side. Mark Moore plays the other corner. And the safeties are Rod Brown, the very hard hitter, and the former quarterback, Adam Hines. Third down, nine. South Carolina converting only three of ten third down plays. Little pitch to Lewis, who likes to throw, and he does here. And it's complete to the one-yard line, and out of a touchdown. He did get in. He got in for the score. Chris Wade from the running back, Quentin Lewis. Those two combined on a 40-yard touchdown pass to beat the Citadel back in September. Lewis to Wade. So the same man who dropped the short touchdown in the first half catches this one and squirms his way into the end zone. And Scott Hagler, who's not missed an extra point this season, keeps his perfect record intact. And so South Carolina, after that big pass play to Poole, come back Lewis to Wade for the score. On the halfback pass, Quentin Lewis, number nine, takes the pitch out, sets it up well by emulating the run, then looks for his wide receiver, Chris Wade. The defensive back, Wendell Yancey, misjudges it, and there's a great effort by Wade to get in the end zone. Now watch in isolation as Wade is an actor first. He acts like he's going to block and comes back. He sees the ball is short, turns around, gets it. And now here's the effort right here as he lunges for the end zone, getting away from Wendell Yancey, number 48. Halfway through the third quarter, South Carolina now trails by only six. Mike Hold, number seven, the quarterback. Quentin Lewis threw the touchdown pass to number two right there. That's Chris Wade. It's 13 to seven in South Carolina to kick off. Halfway through the third quarter, Bobby Riley downs it in the end zone. You know, it's interesting, Lee. You got a couple of teams as you look at the numbers on the Carolina scoring drive. They play relatively conservative offensive football and two of the three touchdowns tonight are on gadget plays. It's a good point, but so often in a ball game like this postseason, what do they have to lose? They're going to pull everything out. All of the gadget plays that maybe they've been saving up that they work periodically during their practice sessions, they figure, why not? Mike Holt, two of three on that last drive for 69 yards. So the Cowboys start this drive from the 20-yard line. The crowd, a predominantly South Carolina crowd, exhorting the defense. Slant and it's complete out to the 28-yard line. Weimer made the catch and pays the price as well. And let's check in with Lynn. Well, what you see right here is a game cock, one of the fighting roosters that represents South Carolina. Now, cock fighting is not held in this country for humanitarian reasons, but these birds are trained to fight to the death. And that's what you're going to see the game cocks of South Carolina do in this football game tonight, Al. Cock fighting not held in this country? Don't tell anybody in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> of the first, not, not legally anyway, to the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and short as Thurman Thomas is the ball carrier. You can always count on Swanee to be with a mascot. We've seen it all year long, right? Gators, War Eagles, Gamecocks. Man has added a new dimension to the sideline with the, his contribution to mascots in 1984. Doctor of Laws in zoology after this season. Third and short, and it's Thomas who has some room. Out past the 30, the 40. Thomas ridden out of bounds in South Carolina territory. Boy, he is an impressive 
freshman Thurman Thomas number 34 well over the hundred mark on that run now for the night Thurman Thomas who we saw just limping off there moments ago gets a good lead block once again from number 31 that's Will Timmons who has been so effective all evening long that springs him to the outside you see some of that sprinter speed that Thomas has and one of the reasons that he was one of the highly recruited freshman tailbacks in America last season from the 43 it's a fumble big pile up no signal yet CC Daly cut eyebrow and all getting to the bottom of the pile and they retain possession to the chagrin of the crowd 45,000 roughly coming down from South Carolina but it's still Oklahoma State's ball it's Derek Burke number 66 at the bottom of the pile second down and 10 from the 43 yard line six minutes 10 seconds remaining third quarter Oklahoma State leading 13 to 7 Charles Crawford is now in as the tailback Hilger finds Hannah open again, and the tight end takes it to the 37-yard line. It will be third and four coming up. Barry Hannah, the tight end, has been effective three times on just that type of pass, the intermediate range passes, mostly over the middle or on crossing routes. His total now for the evening is five for a total of 31 yards. John Jones now in at tailback, number three. Hilger on third and four, going deep and incomplete. Jamie Harris couldn't hang on. They love to run that pattern. It's Taylor covering on the play. Harris was there to pass, if anything, maybe just a tad overthrown. Well, Rusty Hilger has got to be frustrated about now because I think he's thrown this fade pattern about as perfect as you could throw it. I think this is a catchable pass, frankly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Halo number 24 the cornerback on the coverage and he was beaten so they feel that that corner position may be the Achilles heel of the defense and they've been working on it but the balls have not been caught Cooper to kick rushes on ball bounces into the end zone and the Gamecocks will start the next drive from the 20 yard line 505 remaining in the third quarter Oklahoma State leading by six. Played, we have a wireless electrocardiogram attached to Pat Jones, the Oklahoma State coach. We're able to monitor his pulse rate. And as you can see right there, 135 is Jones's pulse rate. In a resting position before it was in the 70s and before the game, he'd gotten up to uh, close to the 150 mark. It was down around 110, 120. Normally you run between, let's say, 60 and 100 beats per minute. So we have Jones with an electric EKG, a pulse readout. We've got him wired for sound. You could run a few machines off that man's body tonight. Just to measure psychic stress, and obviously there is that during the course of a football game. His team leads by six from the 20-yard line. On first down, loose ball at the 23, and Oklahoma State has it. So the Gamecocks give it right back. I think it was Lewis who went through the line and lost the ball. And so the Cowboys, after this altercation, will take over offensively at the game shot 23. Quentin Lewis, number nine, the split back veer. This is part one of the triple option play. He never really gets control of the football. He's hit hard right there by Washington, number 80. Loose ball there, and it's covered finally by an unidentified uh, cowboy. Ball of the 22 yard line for Oklahoma State, first and 10. Hilger, 15 of 26 for 100 yards. Thomas takes it to the 21 yard line. Thurman Thomas, who's had a big night, and it will be second down and nine. It was parting number 42 who made the recovery. He got one earlier, didn't he? He did. Reminds me, the last time South Carolina played in this game, they brought George Rogers in against Pittsburgh's 
Hugh Green. That was the big matchup that night. And tonight they're talking about basically O'Neal defensively for the Cowboys, and yet it's really been Harding's night. O'Neal is playing extremely well. That night it was Jackson for Pittsburgh. Ricky Jackson had one of the great nights of all time in the Gator Bowl in 1980. Second down and nine from the 21-yard line, and Hildreth wants a timeout. That's the first taken by OSU in the second half. 4.15 to play in the third quarter in Jacksonville. Oklahoma State 13, South Carolina 7. Here from Union City, California, the Professional Bowlers Tour, a week from tomorrow, 3 Eastern and Pacific, and that will be followed by the season premiere of Wide World of Sports, new time, 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central. Mary Lou Retton featured on that show, along with Mark Breland, facing Marlon Palmer in his second professional fight from Atlantic City. Union City for the pro bowlers this year. They're usually in Alameda, where I've lived for the last 16 years. Took it right down the highway, right down Highway 17. About equidistant between the two of us. 24th season for the professional bowlers tour. Second down and nine from the 21-yard line on a draw. It is Thomas, and he is stopped back at the 23. Glenn Woodley got an arm on his ankle, number 94. Here's a, a real good look at why the South Carolina defense is called the Fire Ants. Now look how they swarm, all of them. You see how everybody shows up there? They have this idea that everyone should get in there so that they make the film. Tom Gadd, the defensive coordinator, had that idea, and of course, Joe Morrison supports it. Third down and 11. Hilger throwing back to the near side and incomplete. It was Thomas, the intended receiver. He took a little late shove right there, and it looked like Vogel was a half apologizing. Yeah. He knew that he hit him out of bounds. Yeah. No flag. So Roach comes in. Ball will be spotted at the 30. 40-yard kick. No win to speak of. And the kick is no good. Off to the left. He missed a 47-yarder in the first quarter. You heard Jones talking about his kicking game. That was the only thing he didn't like in the first half, and he doesn't like it very much here in the second half either. You see, once again, he gets the left foot a little bit too far forward, and he hooks it for the second straight time. The first one was wide to the left. That's his reaction there, and it's one of disgust. Big field goal, too, because it puts you up by nine if you make it. Especially after the missed extra point, which was no fault of Roche for the bad snap. The Carolina down by six in the 23-yard line. And hold that pass the 35 to 40 to the 43-yard line. He is run down by Leslie O'Neill, the tackle, number 99. We talked about this at halftime, and you've been saying it right along. South Carolina, so much a second-half team, and Mike holds so much of a big play quarterback. He cuts right by Leslie O'Neill, number 99. And Hold has been coming up with big plays consistently since the third week of play during the 1984 season. First down from the 43-yard line. Off the play fake. Hold, scrambling, pump faking, and then going deep. And it is caught for a touchdown by Hillary. Wendell Yancey, and in a game that really has been pretty much dominated by Oklahoma State and controlled by them, South Carolina is now a conversion away from taking the lead as they've tied it up 13-13. Scott Hagler, who's been perfect this season, gives the Gamecocks a one-point margin. Cold, who continues to dazzle fans with this type of play, moves to his left, 
and on the dead run here, he throws the bomb to Ira Hillary, who has gotten by Wendell Yancey, number 48. He turns back, maintains his balance, and now speeds on into the end zone. In isolation, Hillary, you see, is going to run by Wendell Yancey, number 48. And watch how he adjusts to the football here. He sees that the ball is thrown back to his outside. He turns his back on the ball momentarily and now turns around again. He actually spins around three different times before he ultimately goes on into the end zone. Corley, the tight end, was open on the play, too. Hillary's averaging 20 yards a catch this season. He's caught touchdown passes of 62, 71, 50. And now 57 yards here in the Gator Bowl, and two big pass plays have turned it around for South Carolina as the Gamecocks lead 14 to 13. That old black magic continues to work. Gamecocks looking for their 11th win of the season as Hagler puts it in the air. Five yards deep and down to the end zone, and the Cowboys come out to the 20-yard line, wondering what hit them. For what it's worth, in the fourth quarter this season, South Carolina, as you look at hold, has outscored the opposition 130 to 58. We're 244 from going into the fourth. Mike Hold is listed at 5'11", but standing next to him yesterday, I asked him to say, he said, no, I'm a six-footer. And he wants it clear that he's a six-footer. He's obviously thinking about the opinion of the pro scouts for next season. Look at him up there by next season's press guy. I guarantee you. Thurman Thomas starts the drive, getting out to the 23-yard line. Loose ball, but he was down. One thing about it, Mike Holt has a major league arm, and he can throw on the move. And he is not intimidated by pressure. Proven on that play, proven against Clemson, where he scored the tying touchdown, and then Hagler kicked the point after. There's Hillary. When South Carolina goes to the air, you look at their receivers averages. Hillary, 20 yards a catch. The tight end, Corley, 21. Bradshaw, another wide out, 20 yards. Wade, 23. Pool, 30. So they've made the big play this year. Those are the averages. Second down and seven from the 23. Hilger, tight end over the middle for his sixth catch. Barry Hanna takes the ball out to the 47-yard line as he gets three again. Terry Hanna wide open in the middle that time as he was earlier. In fact, on that first drive of the ball game, he was open on that same play. Here's the play action fake to the fullback, Timmons. Now look how wide open Barry Hanna is in the middle there as he runs his crossing pattern. Brought down in the secondary by number 27 there for the Gamecock. Hilger gives it to Thomas. No gain. The 46-yard line. Look at the emotional energy from the fire ant defense there. And the crowd helping to spur them on. Tony Guyton, 93, and on the stop, it'll be second and 11. A slow angle, you get another look at the, the defense of South Carolina. Three guys in on the tackle real quick. Second and 11 from the 46-yard line. A minute five to go in the third quarter. Hilger throwing over the middle to Weimer. He gets into South Carolina territory, stopped at the 49-yard line. It will be third down and a short five. Well, we've seen the tight end before on third and obvious pass situation. Particularly if they gang up on the wide receivers. Hilger has... A the plays are flashed, but he will audibleize. He will change the play if necessary. This time he has three men sent wide on third and five from the 48-yard line, but he keeps it on the ground, gives it to Thomas, and he gets the first down to the 42-yard line. So twice now we've seen Thomas on third down plays come up with a big first down run. You know, here's a guy that's, uh, he really doesn't get a lot of publicity in that conference where most of the publicity goes to Oklahoma and Nebraska. You're looking at a pretty good freshman running back right here. You'll see more publicity next season. Remember, he's only a freshman. He had a 206-yard day against Kansas State this year. Tonight, he's carried 29 times for 140 yards as the third quarter expires at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. The quarter that 
saw South Carolina erase a 13-0 deficit to take the lead. And we'll be back after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Oklahoma State saying Happy New Year. Another OSU, Oregon State, has just named a head coach. Dave Cracktorpe, the former athletic director at Utah State, taking the job. They were having a very tough time filling that job when they fired Joe Avizano at Oregon State. That's a tough program to get turned around, but they finally found a coach anyway. Start the fourth quarter. First down, Oklahoma State. Hilger throws over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Weimer at the 38-yard line. It'll be second down and 10, and we'll take a, a look at the numbers through three. Look at the turnaround here in yardage by South Carolina. You remember how they were trailing so badly? Now look, 285 to 221. Meanwhile, look at the time of possession. Almost two to one for Oklahoma State, so they have controlled the ball. Second down and 10, and it's intercepted at the 29-yard line, picked off by Brian Gilliard, who had eight during the regular season, and Gilliard stops at the 28-yard line. And a penalty marker going down for a probable late hit on a pass that was intended for Barry Hanna. So the Gamecocks, who have the lead, have the ball back at the outset of the fourth period. Brian Gilliard, who has been a hero throughout the season, you mentioned the eight interceptions. He had four in the game against Florida State. Three of those four interceptions against the Seminoles came in the second half. Hilger on a rollout is looking for a combination pattern out here to his right. He throws under quite a bit of pressure, and there's number 20, Bryant Gilliard, right in behind Malcolm Lewis to make a key interception. And a face mask called as you look at Gilliard. Along with eight interceptions, add 120 tackles on the year for Gilliard. He's been active. Carolina from the 32-yard line after a five-yard penalty was assessed. And it's Raynard Brown for a gain of two. I mentioned the pressure on Rusty Hilger on that last play, which set up the interception. Now watch him here. I think if he had this to take back, he would not have thrown this ball because he's got two men right around him. Sumter, number 47, particularly along with Frank Wright, number 90. Second and eight from the 34. Hold, good protection. Has Brown close to a first down as Raynard gets out to the 42-yard line. Takes a shot there. Brown wants a flag, and they don't get it. Hit by Ham and Moore. Gilliard. Now setting a team record because for purposes of keeping school marks, they do count bowl games. So he had eight to tie the school record through the regular season and picks up a ninth year. And he's had over 100 tackles two years in a row. And another thing Carolina is looking for is they measure for the first down and are just shy. South Carolina has never won a bowl game. It's the sixth time the Gamecocks have been to a bowl game. It's the third time they've been to the Gator Bowl. They were here in 1946 for the initial game and lost to Wake Forest. Blown out by Pittsburgh and Rick Tricano and Hugh Green and company in 80. And now here tonight. Tail end of the last play, it appears that there is a face mask penalty at the end. And it looks like Ham is pulling down Raynard Brown, number 30, by the face mask. Carolina protested to no avail. Third and inches from the 42-yard line, and the first down as Hold just keeps it and takes it out to the 44-yard line. There'll be no protest on that one. That's clearly a first down. Hold has gone all the way tonight. Again, if you joined us late and haven't followed South Carolina, they went with a two-quarterback system this year. For the most part, Alan Mitchell was the starter. Hold came on several times to pull games out. Then Hold got the start and went all the way against Clemson, and he's been in there all the way tonight. And both men come back next year. On first down, Hold going deep and incomplete. Double teamed was Chris Wade, who got spun around. Here's the aforementioned spin around right here. The ball is thrown too much to the outside and a little bit too deep. 
But because of the coverage, it's good that he threw it where he did because that's the type of pass. Had he thrown it with a looping trajectory over the inside shoulder, could have been intercepted either by Mark Moore or Adam Hines, who were both on the coverage. Second and ten from the 44-yard line. Hold. Completing it to the 44-yard line. And a first down. It's the first catch of the night for Emory Bacon. Emory Bacon, number four, the wide receiver who is seldom used, runs a very good-looking sideline pattern right there. And that ball was really zipped by Mike Hold. Leslie O'Neill, who has been handled pretty well here in the second half, however, it takes two men to do it. First down from the 44-yard line is Smith. Gains about four. That catch by Bacon was only his second of the season. Caught one during the regular year for seven yards. Hold is now six out of 16. Those numbers aren't particularly impressive in terms of completion percentage, but 156 yards. Don't forget the drop passes, too. And the tip and one touchdown pass drop. One sure touchdown pass. Second and six. He keeps. Gets about a yard. Forward progress took him to the 39-yard line. He's run back by James Ham. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the game. South Carolina on top, 14-13. Oklahoma State, a two to three point pick coming in tonight. You talked to Mike yesterday about how he how he got out of Arizona. How did he get away? Well, he was a pretty good option quarterback, and Morrison was looking for an option quarterback. And Joe was in New Mexico and knew some people in the Southwest. Got a call and said, uh, why don't you take a look at this fellow? So they recruited Hole, and he's matriculating at Columbia. Sort of an odd route from Tempe to Columbia. Pretty good night for him tonight. But here he's wrapped up, and down he goes. At the 50-yard line, Warren Thompson stopping him back near the 50. So South Carolina will have to punt. Play action fake as Hold is trying to throw deep again. He steps forward in his pocket, and Thompson, number 91, wraps him up right there. Tom O'Connor kicking. Ball bounces inside the 10, and they are they able to stop it before it goes in? He drops the beanbag at the 6, and apparently they're going to contend that it was down there. Now, this one I want to see again. I don't know how in the world he contends it's down at the 6-yard line, but let's see. Maybe let's see somebody if it touches touch it. somebody. Let's see if somebody touches it right there. No, no, no. Touches, touches it, it there, the but you need control of it, don't you? He didn't uh, get control of it. It went into the end zone. And there goes the beanbag down at the six. And it, the, the official who made the call may be overruled as they bring it back now. And he is overruled. They'll bring it back to the 20. And Oklahoma State will start its drive from there after the touchback. Let's go. Let's go. I think the reason for the beanbag, Al, is that it appears to hit the right foot of Harry South, number 83. That's why he threw the beanbag down. There's the squat. The ball goes into the end zone. I think the call is correct. It belongs at the 20-yard line. As it turns out, the one official made the call but was overruled. Well, what would the end of 84 be without a wave, right? Is it true that you were part of the original wave? No, absolutely not. There's no truth to that rumor? <laughs> no. I'd like to be a part of its death. <laughs> First I thought we saw the end of it in Lexington, yeah. Kentucky I earlier did. this year. I did, too. First down from the 20-yard line as Hilger. A little toss back to Thomas. Takes it out to the 24. Remember, we did a game in Kentucky. We complimented the fans. It was the first time I'd been in a stadium in eight months where I didn't see a wave. It was wonderful. It was like a good title for a book, The Last Wave. Right. <laughs> Second down and six at the 24-yard line. Thomas averaging close to five yards to carry tonight. 10.45 remaining in the game. Hilger has gone all the way at quarterback, wrapping up his senior season. Thomas again. Stops die at the 25-yard line. Tony Guyton 
Number 93 gets credit for that tackle. It'll be third down and five. Close up look here at quarterback Rusty Hilger handing off to his tailback. Tony Guyton, number 93, is in perfect position to make the hit there. Once again, the fire ants are swarming. Third and five. Swing to Thomas. He needs to get to the 30, and he reaches only the 27. So the Cowboys to kick as we are under the 10 minute mark. That was a big defensive series for the Gamecocks. Listen to the emotional energy in the stands now. Very partisan crowd, as you've noted right along. Cooper to kick. Oklahoma State having problems earlier in the season, then Cooper sort of got them squared away. Not a particularly good average tonight. In fact, 34-5 is quite poor. During the regular season, he averaged 38, which is marginally adequate. Decent kick here. Probably his best of the game. Fielded at the 33 by Dunlap, and he's wrapped up at the 34-yard line. 9.08 left in the game with the game box ahead by a point. Tonight, New Year's night, the Sugar Bowl gets underway at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Always tough Nebraska. Great defense. Out of the Big 8 against LSU. 12th ranked this season under Bill Arnsparger. New Year's night from New Orleans. Good one here, South Carolina and Oklahoma State, two teams in the top 10 in a one-point game. South Carolina on top 14-13. The pitch to Thomas Dendy and a sweep to the right. He's pushed back by number 44, Mark Moore, who comes up from his cornerback spot. Eight minutes and 55 seconds left in the game. Oklahoma State, you mentioned at the top, is a slight, was a slight favorite in the game, but I felt right along it was a pick em game. I felt on paper they were about as even as they could be. From the 36, hold, scrambling, and gets out to the 42. A very resourceful quarterback. Crazy game when you look at the numbers at the end of this game. Very, very odd. As you Pressure look at from the outside this time by Leslie O'Neill, number 99, who has had a marvelous career thus far, and he's only a junior. He was a Lombardi finalist. Probably will win that award next year, or will have a good shot at it. Third and four, and a first down is picked up by Dendy as he takes it out to the 49-yard line. So now Carolina beginning to control the ball. Talking about the odd numbers, remember at the end of the third quarter, Oklahoma State had controlled the ball almost 30 minutes, or two-thirds of the time. And yet now South Carolina commencing what they hope will be a long and time-consuming drive. We mentioned before that South Carolina has vastly outscored its opponents in the fourth period of this season. Good come from behind team, and they already lead by one. First down from the 49-yard line. It's hold. Wrapped back at the 47 by Rodney Harding, number 42. Gain of four. Another thing we ought to point out, too, Lee, is that Ken Haygood may be the best running back of all for South Carolina, but he suffered a broken leg in the eighth game of the year against North Carolina State. And the others have had to pick up the slack, but have you noticed that not one ball carrier this year averaged 10 carries per game in South Carolina. That's because Joe Morrison uses so many people, and also it's the nature of the beer to scatter it around. Dendy to the 42-yard line. Dendy, if you look over the last uh, three years, though, has been the most consistent ball carrier for them. 614 yards coming into the night's nice game. It's kind of a spinning style of running. He'll hit, spin, take off again. Third down and two from the 43-yard line. And it's hold keeping. 
close to a first. Again, we'll see where they mark it. I don't think he made it, but they may give him the benefit. Let's see. James Ham and David Webb, the two ends, converge to shove him back. He has to get to the 41 yard line, just inside the 41, and he is not there. Shy by half a yard or so. So it's fourth down, and they're going to call a timeout here and discuss it. And that will stop the clock with six minutes and five seconds remaining in the 40th Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, where South Carolina leads Oklahoma State by one point. The Oklahoma State head coach, Pat Jones, wireless EKG. Run the damn thing and pitch it. Them guys go bite the quarterback or some goofy shit like that. Well, <laughs> that's what his heart rate is right now, 136 feet, 127, dropping down there in a hurry. Obviously, he's not too concerned. Not necessarily. Should be. Big fourth down play. They go for it from the 41-yard line. Hold. He got it. Has the first down as he hands the ball off to Lewis. Who threw the touchdown pass to four. Joe Morrison, very relaxed, arms folded, watching his team leading by a point, going for the first down, and picking it up at the 39-yard line. Big first down, if nothing else, it means you can run another couple of minutes off the clock. 5.50 to go. That's the what they have to keep doing, chewing up that clock right now. From the 39-yard line, hold, flag is thrown, and the pass is tipped incomplete. Chris Corley, the intended receiver, tipped away, batted away by Mark Moore. Number 44, and a penalty flag is thrown for holding against South Carolina, which is normally the call in these instances. Poole appears to be wide open momentarily, but then the coverage picks him up. He's still about five yards behind the nearest defender, Adam Hines, number 14. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty from a previous spot. First down. Oklahoma State had the option of having it second and 10 or first and 20. They opted for first and 20 with 535 to play in the game. Hold gives it to Clint Lewis. Blocker out in front inside the 45, the 40, and the bounds at the 30 yard line. Clint Lewis, number nine. Clinton Lewis, who threw a touchdown pass earlier, comes on a misdirection play. Look at the lead blocks here by the two guards, Wilkes and Walsh. Well, Wilkes, number 62. Good cut right there by Lewis. He takes it up close to a first down. Great recovery there by Lewis. Williams finally makes the tackle. 19-yard gain. It is second and one. Clock stopped as he ran out of bounds from the 30-yard line. Seeking the first down is Lewis over the right side. They needed about a half a yard. Officials calling time as we will likely see a measurement here. Break the chain in with 519 remaining in the game. So it'll either be third down and an inch or so, or a first down, and it, it, it's that close. It's third down and an inch or so. Game shots on top. 14-13. After trailing at the half, 13 to nothing. Hold, keeping, should have it. Takes it to the 28-yard line. Joe Morrison in his second season. They've had some problems 
at South Carolina, paying coaches off. They had Jim Carlin there for a number of years and then owed him a lot of money and salary and insurance. When they fired him, Richard Bell took over for a year and then they fired him and he won a legal settlement of about $170,000. And they brought in Morrison, Bob Markham, the AD, as Walsh comes off the field for South Carolina. And Joe has turned in the first 10 victory season in the history of the school and is just minutes away from a possible 11. On first down, it's Dendy cutting back inside, taking it to the 24-yard line, and a marker is thrown again. This time it's a clip against South Carolina. Which will push them back to close to the 40 yard line with 4.50 to play in the game. Pat Jones, who watched his team play a close to flawless first half, built up a 13 0 lead and watched it evaporate. First down. He's watched tendencies change also. Oklahoma State, the possession team early on. It's been South Carolina controlling the ball here lately. Penalty marked off from the spot of the foul to the 41-yard line. It's first down and 22. Dendy on a draw play goes nowhere. Second down. As far as timeouts are concerned, the Gamecocks and the Cowboys each have two remaining. Reminder coming up on Nightline tonight, vigilante violence, the New York subway incident that's touched the nerve nationwide. That'll be the subject on Nightline tonight, following your late local news. Second and 22 from the 42-yard line. Cold, getting good protection, and throws it away. Third down. Chris Corley well covered that time by Mark Moore. So Hole did the right thing. He threw the ball wide and long. Harmless. Third down, the play coming in from Chris Wade, number two, who dropped one touchdown pass in the first half. Caught one here in the second. Main thing, they don't want a turnover. A third and 22. Hold has to scramble again. Throws, completes it to oh. Wade, but he was out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And Hold was very close to crossing the line of scrimmage as he threw it just prior to reaching the 42-yard line. You see the athletic ability of Mike Hold here as again he gets out of trouble, moves to his left, throws the ball under pressure to Chris Wade, who is along the sideline here. In college football, one foot is all that is necessary, but he is clearly out of bounds there. That would have been enough for a first down. Instead, O'Connor is forced to kick, bouncing at the 12, and dying at the 12 yard line. O'Connor's 14th kick this season inside the 20-yard line. 3.41 to play of the game. Al Michaels with Lee Gross Cup, Lynn Swan at the Gator Bowl. Pat Jones watching his team take possession of the ball now at the 12-yard line. First and 10, they have two timeouts left. 3.41 on the clock, and they trail by a point. Rusty Hill to the quarterback. Dropping back on first down. Throwing an out complete at the 22-yard line to Weaver, number 22. Who went right about, out of bounds right at the first down marker. Straight drop back action by quarterback Rusty Hilger here as he looks for Weimer, his wide receiver on the left, and as he has been this effective all night on the sideline cut the same route that he has used about five times. Good timing, good footwork along the sidelines by Terry Weimer, number 22, a junior, 
who is six foot 175 and caught 14 passes during the regular season. Enough for a first down to the 22 yard line. Hilger going deep and incomplete at the 35 yard line. Nearly picked off by Chris Major and Morrison can't believe the call. Harris was overthrown, the intended receiver. They ruled it incomplete and no interception. Chris Major, number 13, the coverage on the play. Jamie Harris is the intended receiver, number 83. Chris Major, number 13, appears to have the ball, but I think he trapped it. Good I think call. it's a good call by the official because he never had real possession of it, and you can see that it hits the ground right here before he actually gets possession of the football. Yep. Good call. Second and 10 from the 22-yard line. Sling. Zachary. And the fullback takes it out close to a first down to the 32-yard line. Ken Zachary, a great sprinter. A man who plays fullback, though, and in this offense, that means you block a lot. Occasionally catch a pass, enough for a first down here. Hilger is 20 out of 34 for 150 yards. So he's averaging seven and a half yards per completion. Zachary is the type of player who could move the tailback, however, because of his speed. First down from the 32. That's complete out to the 45-yard line. Goes Malcolm Lewis, who takes it to the 47. So Hilger, on these short passes, connecting. Gilliard makes the tackle. Under three minutes to play, but the Cowboys have moved it out to midfield. Lewis on that deep slant in pattern that has been effective all night long. Catches the ball, loses a tackler there. Now here comes Gilliard, number 20, the leading tackler in the secondary who had an interception earlier. First down at the 47-yard line. Hilger, a little shovel. And at the 49-yard line, a gain of two. Thurman Thomas, talking about maybe moving Zachary someday to tailback. Only Thomas has played the night. <laughs> he won't need a tailback no. for the next few years. Next three years, that's taken care of. Unless he well, gets hurt. Ernest Anderson led the nation in 82. Thomas could do it next year. Second and eight. Hilger. Incomplete. Wrapped up was Barry Hanna on the play by Rick Ravoon, number 21. There is Roach, the place kicker. He's missed two tonight, but this year he's kicked the 52-yarder, and he's kicked three of more than 50 yards in his career. Big third down call now for Rusty Hildreth. Going with three wideouts. On third and seven. Hilger stops at the 49-yard line. And it will be fourth and five coming up as he tried to run for a first down. And Glenn Woodley was able to chase him down from arrears with 154 remaining in the game. So 154 left, a fourth down play upcoming for Oklahoma State after a timeout. Fourth down and six for Oklahoma State. Pat Jones and his staff sending the play in with 154 remaining in the game. Oklahoma State taking that last time out. They have one remaining. They are at the South Carolina 49 yard line. Ball game right on the line here for Oklahoma State. How's Pat Pulse rate? The pass is Hilger, has the first down. Barry Hanna has been his money man, the tight end. He stayed in bounds. The clock now temporarily stopped because of the first down with 146 remaining. Barry Hanna, who has been so effective on this crossing pattern, gets in front of the linebacker there, makes the catch, good hand-eye coordination and concentration, and he picks up the valuable first down and keeps the drive alive for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State at the 36-yard line. 
Referee starts the clock on first and 10 now from the 36. Cowboys, one timeout left. Hilger, swing out to Thomas and incomplete. Second down. Tight end Barry Hanna now seven catches for 67 yards. We've been checking from time to time Jones's pulse rate. Went up around 130, 140. Right now at 152. And climbing. And climbing. That is the highest it's been all night. Psychic stress levels high. Second and 10 from the 36. Thomas, they keep it on the ground. Good call to the 26-yard line. Defense looking past. They give it to Thomas on the ground, and he's close to another first down. I believe he has it. The ball is inside the 26. So right now, if they stop them dead here, a field goal attempt would be about 42 yards. Well, in Roach's range. 32 carries for Thomas now for 154 yards. He's not only exciting, he's dependable. Clutch runner. First down to the 25-yard line. Over the middle, complete the tight end. Hanna again inside the 10-yard line, and Hanna tries to pull his way in and does for a touchdown. Great effort by Barry Hanna, who kept catching the short passes all night long in key situations, and this time he goes all the way in for the score, 26 yards. His first touchdown of the season. Pretty good time for it. What a way to cap a season. Barry Hanna, who we've been talking about as a clutch receiver all evening, runs the same crossing pattern that we saw moments ago and tight ropes his way into the end zone. I thought momentarily he'd stepped out of bounds. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State has now taken another timeout. They lead by five. And it would behoove them to go for a two-point conversion here. So Jones wants to call that play as we look at the TD again. You see Hannah crossing underneath. He gets in behind the linebacker. Now here's the key. Watch him along the sideline. He pulls past a defender right there. Watch his right foot. It looks momentarily like he's out of bounds, but no, his left foot is still in. Drags the right foot back around. Pulls over another defender here. Now he just keeps fighting and fighting and fighting along the sideline and scratches his way into the end zone. And there it is. Amazing second, third, and fourth effort by tight end Barry Hanna, number 82. Catch here. Joe Brooks, number 23, is the first man to have a shot at him. Chris Major, number 13, the cornerback, is fighting him here. Along comes the support, but he drags three tacklers on into the end zone with that amazing effort. Barry Hanna wrapping up his career. He has not scored a touchdown since his freshman year when he scored two. Now a two-point conversion attempt to try to give OSU a seven-point lead. They lead 19 to 14 as Hilger rolls. Looks, throws, and completes it for the two points to Jamie Harris. So they're up 21 to 14. Jamie Harris, number 83, is the wide receiver on the right. Comes straight up into Chris Major, bumps off him, works back toward the football. The ball is thrown with perfect timing by Hilger as it had to be on the sideline route. What a comeback by the Cowboys. One minute, four seconds remaining. Gamecocks with two timeouts when they get the ball back. Watch Barry Hanna once again on the last touchdown. He's coming underneath the coverage from right to left, or left to right, depending on your point of view. Brooks has a shot at him right here. Now watch his right foot as his left foot is along the sidelines. His right foot is in the air, and he swings it around. Major comes in. Collision there, and he drags three more tacklers on into the end zone. That is a remarkable effort by the tight end, Barry Hanna. I think he's in. I think it's all legit. 
Now they put it in the hands of the defense as Oklahoma State kicks off to South Carolina with a minute and four remaining in the game. And it hops into the end zone. So South Carolina needing a touchdown. And then in all probability, they would, if they cross the goal line, go for the two-point conversion and the win. 104 remaining. And two timeouts remaining for the Gamecocks. Can't imagine that man playing for the tie. No, no way. Oklahoma State led by Hilger. Two very impressive scoring drives in the first half. And two long pass plays for TDs for South Carolina. But Oklahoma State coming back against a team noted for making comebacks. Little screen and a lot of blocking for Dendy past the 30 to the 34. Well, the rush was on, fumbled after the play. And the clock is stopped for the first down with 54 seconds. And now Carolina wants to take a timeout. But they set up the screen and take it out to the 34-yard line. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the Gator Bowl produced by Kirk Gowdy, Jr., directed by Larry Camp. Werner Gunther, our technical director. Ben Harvey, our AD. Tony Bursley, our technical manager. Unit manager, Murray Schwartz. Ray Schmaltz III, the assistant to the producer. And our thanks to our guys up here, George Hill and Malibu Kelly Hayes for an outstanding year. Enjoyed it, guys. 54 seconds remaining in the fourth period. South Carolina scored with 102 remaining in the game to beat the Citadel earlier this season. They scored in the final minute to beat North Carolina State. And then in their last game, the game in which they erased a 21-3 deficit, they scored a touchdown by Hold, and then Hagler's extra point with 54 seconds remaining in the game to beat Clemson. And Hagler's extra point came after a penalty was assessed against Clemson for having a 12th man on the field. First down at the 34-yard line. Hold back to pass. Going deep. And picked off at the 25-yard line by Denise Williams. Fumble, and he fumbles the ball. And let's see who's got it. No signal yet as they still wrestle for it. So Oklahoma State trying to maintain possession. The pile up at the 42-yard line. And it's Oklahoma State recovering. So Williams makes the interception on a pass intended for Poole. Fumbles the ball. Eric Poole, the intended receiver, wrestles by the zone coverage. Now Denise Williams, number five, will come in. He's the safety man coming over. The quarterback coming over. Good interception there. Now he's running along the sideline. He cuts back to the inside here. Loses the ball right there. Stripped away by Emery. There's a whole, whole bunch of people scrambling for the football, but the Cowboys come up with it. Williams is a nephew of basketball great Elgin Baylor. We might have to teach him how to dribble the next time. <laughs> First down at the 43-yard line, and the Cowboys can just run the clock out. The Gamecocks, if they elect, can stop the clock one more time. The media has voted Thurman Thomas, the outstanding Oklahoma State player tonight, and Mike Hole, the outstanding Gamecock, with 15 seconds remaining. Pat Jones becomes the winningest coach for a single season in Cowboys history with 10 wins. The last time they had nine was 1932 when Pappy Waldorf was the coach for Oklahoma State. And South Carolina has still not won a bowl game. A very interesting matchup, though, tonight. The first half dominated by the Cowboys. South Carolina then coming out, scoring twice in the third period. Appeared to be taking control of the game. But at the very end, when they needed it, it was Hilger leading a long drive that resulted in a touchdown and a victory. I've been covering Gator Bulls since 1972, and this is my favorite game. It was uh, everything that we could have asked for. It had the excitement. It had the intensity. It was a close game. It was a seesaw game. Our congratulations to both coaches. 
no one can feel bad about the season that they have had. Joe Morrison's team coming into the game ranked seventh in the country. Matt Jones' is team number nine, and Oklahoma State would figure to move up after this one. Quite a year for the Big Eight, sending Oklahoma to the Orange Bowl, sending Nebraska to the Sugar Bowl, and Oklahoma State into the Gator Bowl where they come up a winner on this pass play at the end with 104 remaining in the game. The game winner to tight end Barry Hanna. Tonight's hero, number 82. Brooks is the first tackler. He gets away there. Major number 13 there. A host of tacklers, and he scrambles his way on into the end zone. On a, It's slightly controversial, but I think it was a good call to give him the touchdown. Very emotional victory for Pat Jones. Clock still shows a second left, but you, <laughs> you can forget it. As Jones acknowledges the cheers of the contingent of about 15,000 that made its way from Stillwater and Environs into Jacksonville, most of the crowd going home somber with the 45,000 South Carolina partisans on hand. The clock still shows one second, but uh, the victory ceremony is already taking place with the trophies to be awarded to each team's most valuable player. Well, we've come a long way since 1946 when South Carolina played in the first Gator Bowl game before some 7,000 people. So the final score again was 21 to 14 as the Oklahoma State Cowboys defeat the South Carolina Gamecocks in the 40th Gator Bowl. Pat, Pat Jones, victorious. This ABC Sports exclusive was brought to you by Chevrolet. See today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Owens Corning, our building products put your house in the pink. Oklahoma State wins it by a score of 21 to 14. A reminder, ABC News Nightline will follow your late local news. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.